Okay, so definitely the mashup isn't something that you play at a party, but uh, Christian, it's really hard to say that they don't sound a lot like each other when you listen to that. Yeah, the mashup sounds a little bit off because they're in different keys, but essentially from that you can tell that the timing, uh, the rhythm of the melody, the pace, the tempo, and the actual melodic contour, if you like, of the, of the notes themselves are pretty almost identical match. Explain copyright in music for us, because this was about the melody, but when you're talking about the chords and, and the general makeup of a song, when it, 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 yeah. different rules apply. There are certain aspects, certain musical aspects, um, that are not protectable under copyright law. So a chord sequence, for example, you can't copyright a natural progression of chords because our under, our, the Western European understanding of tonality of music is that certain chords are expected to progress in certain directions so um, you know there's a there's a certain type of analysis where you can reduce every piece of music to three chords one five one um, so you wouldn't expect um, elements like rhythm tempo the key uh, harmony on their own to be protectable but when they are cumulative effects they can be considered in a copyright infringement case the most if you like the most valuable part of a piece of music is its melody, mm. is the bit that people remember, the bit that people sing, is generally the melody will be the hook, although there are examples um, of pieces of music where, um, for example, Queen with the, you know, the two drums and the clap, you, mm. that would be a rhythm that's actually considered a hook. So we will rock you, you couldn't, you, you couldn't sue for copyright if you use the... It would be, it would be really, uh, it, would be, it would be a dangerous thing for somebody mm. to release a song that has that predominantly through it or starts off with that you know it starts in the same way that might make people think when they hear the beginning of that song that it's that it's Queen's song. And we've had a couple as Dan's report said Marvin Gaye's estate and uh, Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams for the two songs that clash there. Led Zeppelin recently had one yeah. um, I can't remember the band the, the chord sequence Spirit, and, Spirit and Stairway yeah. to Heaven. Yeah this is this one is different though because it's the melody. Yeah, yeah. so other um, high profile cases that we've seen recently have been more based on uh, really ambiguous things like feel and groove and soul, which are you know sort of indis indis indistinguishable um, elements of a song. But when it comes down to a melody and particularly a melody in a chorus, um, you're looking at a, a valuable piece of a piece of music. And is there a particular danger that this happens more often in the pop industry because it is so commercialised and there is a real formula to a successful pop song? Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, commercial music is written to make money. It's kind of prescriptive in certain senses. It needs to be of a certain duration so that it will be played on radio, the way that radio airplays work with commercial breaks, etc. So you're looking at a two minute piece of music. Within that, it has to fulfill, it has to t tick certain boxes. So you expect there to be an introduction, a verse, a chorus, maybe an instrumental section. So when you start boiling it down in terms of structure, it is quite a formula, almost, it's not, don't want to kind of cheapen it, but it's a little bit like painting by numbers in some respects where you're trying to get certain tick certain boxes and get certain parts of the structure in together so um, then when you're talking about uh, say for example a ballad where you know the features if, it, if the features aren't there people won't consider it a ballad you know, you're starting to reduce it boil it down into a very formulaic way of writing and therefore it's not surprisable that people can you know often end up with crossover between different Piece of music. It's, a re it's a really interesting uh, aspect of music and uh, one we could talk about for a long time. But Christian Siddell, thanks very much for coming in and talking to us about it.